Silicone. It's waterproof, ponding proof, durable, offers one coat coverage, and can be applied in lower temperatures than acrylics, extending the spray season. However, due to high atomizing pressures, specific equipment requirements, heavy bodied material, moisture cure and precise cleanup requirements, using silicone is more challenging than other materials. In this video, we will address challenges for each of these categories and present best practice techniques to achieve the most desirable results. We will also discuss spray equipment, since spraying is the preferred method of application due to dramatically faster application compared to rollers or squeegees. For best results, handling and moving the material should be kept to a minimum. Spraying allows for less handling and precise mill build, which is also important for warranties. Silicone is moisture cure. As soon as the material makes contact with the moisture in the air, it will begin the curing process. This is especially rapid in humid conditions, although even dry desert air will quickly start the curing process. The buckets that contain the silicone are typically filled with moisture-free gas, so don't open the material container until you're ready to spray. And no, you don't have to do any mixing. Mixing only adds moisturized air to the silicone, creating clumps inside the material. Once the container is open, place a sheet of plastic over the top to help keep air from drying the surface of the material, potentially causing skins. If a skin does form or other debris makes contact with the material, it's important to remove it to keep it out of the sprayer pump. Use something like a common mesh colander, such as one used for cooking. For easy cleanup, use masking tape or tin foil on the surfaces of wands, shields, or other components used for application. When you're done, just remove. In typical summer weather, silicone requires 2800 to 3800 PSI at the gun to atomize. But be aware that different formulations and cooler temperatures can affect the required pressure. Choose a high output sprayer that allows for extended hose lengths, yet still allow for adequate pressure at the gun to atomize in varying temperatures and different formulations. Smaller machines can be used on medium to small roofs, but still require moderate hose lengths and utilize smaller diameter hoses for easier maneuverability. Use of filters with silicone is not recommended due to the reduction of flow. Since larger tip sizes are generally used with silicone, tip clogs won't be much of an issue unless material is contaminated. Adjust the ball travel on the machine to its maximum setting, allowing more time for material to enter the pump. This will help eliminate dry stroking the pump resulting in pump damage. There are several things you can do to help eliminate material contamination. Have a pump lower, hose and gun dedicated to silicone only. Don't use these parts with any other materials. Exposure to water, alcohol and other materials can cause silicone to set up and ruin components. Flush your machine with virgin mineral spirits before and after every use. Be sure to use virgin mineral spirits as it contains no water or alcohol. Before and after each use, always open the foot valve and inspect for dried materials and other debris that may degrade performance. Clean these components with virgin mineral spirits. Adding a 10,000 PSI pressure gauge at the outlet of the pump is useful for correctly setting the pump pressure for maximum efficiency, as well as being a tool to monitoring pump operation and performance. Finally, keep spare parts or an entire extra lower on hand to eliminate downtime. This includes O-rings, gaskets, and other small parts. To minimize pressure loss, always use an appropriate high-pressure rated hose with the largest diameter possible. As with all spray materials, the larger the hose, the more pressure that will be available to atomize with. Connect the hose to the unit, gun, and other sections of the hose and torque connections at 90 foot-pounds. This is typically a quarter turn after the surfaces make contact. Keep previously used and flushed hoses full of virgin mineral spirits and cap the ends for long and short-term storage. Temperature, movement of hoses, and pressure can affect tightness over time, and leaking will result in damaged hoses and fittings. So it's very important to check hose and pump connections periodically throughout the day for tightness. For silicone, it's important to always use an appropriately pressure-rated gun 
with a very large internal passage, such as Graco's XHF or XTR7HF high flow guns. Thoroughly flush the gun with virgin mineral spirits before and after each use to remove debris. When taking a break or stopping for an extended amount of time, submerge the gun in virgin mineral spirits or cap the end of the gun and always have a spare gun on hand. Always use appropriately pressurated tips such as XHD. Typical sizes range from upper 30 thousandths to upper 50 thousandths with 45 thousandths to 57 thousandths being the most popular for a GH933 with a spray wand. During breaks, remove the tip and guard and submerge them in virgin mineral spirits. Then cap or submerge the gun. Thoroughly clean all tips with virgin mineral spirits prior to storage. This includes spraying virgin mineral spirits through them to ensure the orifice is clear of silicon. Most issues resulting in pump damage occur because of inadequate material delivery to the pump, often caused by improper setup of the ball cage spacers. Ball cage spacers should always be set to allow for maximum ball travel, which involves locating all the spacers and washers between the seat and cage. Once ball travel is set, it is important to continue to feed the pump with an adequate supply of material. The best method is with a feed pump, such as the Monarch 5 to 1. This system also has the advantage of keeping the material sealed throughout the use. The second best method for delivering material is a hopper. Hoppers provide a good amount of head pressure that allows material to easily flow to the pump. Direct immersion of the pump lower into a bucket is the third best way to feed the pump, although it can be difficult with cold or thicker materials. If ball travel is set to maximum and the system is running at good pressure, but the spray pattern seems sparse, most likely there is a material delivery issue. This can overheat the pump and damage components. Best practice would indicate that you should utilize a feed pump or hopper when possible to avoid downtime and issues. For proper setup, first disassemble the pump lower foot valve and inspect it for residue and debris. Reassemble the foot valve, being careful not to damage the O-ring. Uncap the stored hose sections and attach them to the unit. Ensure proper torque, but don't attach the gun yet. Even a hose stored with virgin mineral spirits will have gelled particles of silicone inside. So pump fresh virgin mineral spirits through the pump and hoses until all clumps and residue have exited the hose. Now, attach the gun and pump virgin mineral spirits through the entire system and gun. Load material and pump out any remaining mineral spirits until material reaches the gun. You're now ready to spray. Always spray at the lowest pressure possible while achieving a desired spray pattern. This will not only allow for maximum hose lengths, but will also limit overspray and extend your sprayer's pump life. For maximum productivity, utilize spray wands and tips with large orifices and wide spray patterns. For the best coverage and most precise mill build, spray in multiple layers and crosshatch, always overlapping each pass by 50%. If your preference is to roll, use a low overspray spray roller such as a Graco heavy-duty jet roller. This is especially helpful in windy conditions, when typical spraying would be impractical. On larger jobs, utilize an assistant to help manage the hose and keep things moving faster. When you've finished spraying for the day or the project, the silicone material must be protected from air or moisture exposure as much as possible. Completely cover and seal the material container. The nice thing about silicone is that, at most, it will only set up the top one and a half inches of material when exposed to air. This can simply be peeled away to expose fresh material below. Extensions and tips should be flushed clean with virgin mineral spirits, preferably with a dedicated small airless sprayer dedicated to pumping mineral spirits for cleaning. Clean the gun exterior and cap outlet or keep it all submerged in mineral spirits until spraying is resumed. Some prefer to leave a tiny amount of pressure in the system a couple hundred pounds or less. 
but always follow recommended pressure relief instructions with any spray system. Each time you resume spraying, skins will likely have formed on the material surface. These skins and any other debris should be removed with a screen prior to running the material through a sprayer. Material that is completely dried onto the sides of the hopper poses little issue, as it typically will not release into the material. This can be left in place until the final cleanup. Add the extension and tip assembly back to the gun, turn on the sprayer, and resume spraying. A spray system can be kept in material for extended periods of multi-day spraying, but if the material sits for more than one day without spraying, recirculate material through the system back into the material container for a few minutes. Proper cleaning and storage of your equipment is important so it will be ready for your next job. Start by removing material from the equipment, then clean any visibly dirty areas off the equipment with virgin mineral spirits. Load virgin mineral spirits into the machine and spray the remaining silicone through the pump, hose, and gun. Continue to pump virgin mineral spirits until it runs clear. The amount will depend on hose length, although 20 gallons or more is typical for a large sprayer, such as a GH933. 10 gallons is typical for smaller sprayers, such as a Dutymax GH675DI. Insert the spray tip and spray virgin mineral spirits through the orifice to clean the tip. Remove the tip and wipe the barrel with virgin mineral spirits and store. With the pressure removed from the system, remove the gun and hose sections. Keep virgin mineral spirits in the hose and cap the ends for storage. Then thoroughly clean the gun. Finally, flush virgin mineral spirits through the pump and then remove and clean the foot valve. Carefully reassemble. Taking care to put parts back in correct positions and being careful not to damage the O-rings. Load the pump with virgin mineral spirits and store. 